Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. My guest today is Jan Werner, Director of the European Space Agency. Hello and thank you for being here with us. 50 years ago, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Do you remember what you were doing then? I remember it very well. I was 15 years old. It was two days after my 15th birthday. And I do not remember my birthday, not at all. I don't know what I got at that day, but I remember this evening and this night very well. I was sitting in front of a black and white TV set, which was no disadvantage because it was anyhow only black and white. I was looking to all the presentations uh, before the landing, and then the eagle has landed this famous sentence, and then also when Neil Armstrong put it first, his foot on the surface of the moon. What is the legacy of Apollo 11 and of this moment 50 years after? At least the footprints, because there is no wind on the surface of the moon, so the footprints are still there. But I think there is more 50 years after, and all of us are now talking worldwide about this event. This shows already that there is a lot of heritage. It's heritage of the past, but uh, it's also from me, it's a clear message for the future. So going beyond the Earth, going beyond also lower orbit, uh, where no man has gone before. So this is really what is uh, the heritage of that. We should go further. The Americans want to go back to the moon. The Chinese are talking about it too. In your opinion, is it realistic to send a man back to the moon? I don't want to go back to the moon. I want to go forward to the moon. Because uh, going back to the moon would be the same as 50 years ago in race in space about the big powers, power, uh, the USA and the UDSSR. So next time we should go there together. Uh, and therefore, I, I always say, let's go forward to the moon um, in a different setup with different reasons to do science, to do technology, but also inspiration and fascination will be also there in the future. And I have the feeling that right now, the different states worldwide are cooperating to go together and not uh, in a strong competition. Competition is a driver for humankind, but cooperation is an enabler. And to go together to the moon is something which is very nice. So ESA is um, uh, the European Space Agency. We are uh, collecting all the ideas of our 22 member states. And uh, by that, and also by getting the money from these member states, we can do also things a single nation cannot afford. And therefore, ESA is also part of uh, going to the moon, forward to the moon. So we are part of the Americans. When they really go back to the moon, as they would like to do it, 2024, then we will go together with them. That means we will go forward to the moon because part of the new launch system towards the moon is produced in Europe. It's a so-called European service module. But also the lunar gateway, which will be a bus stop to go to the surface of the moon and back, uh, will have some uh, elements of Europe. So we are looking forward, really, to be part of the game. We have our own moon missions, but also together with you, uh, with the United States. Well, space exploration is first and foremost a financial issue. Uh, are you concerned about what's happening in Europe? From my point of view, this financial issue is always overestimated in its value. It's not a lot of money. So you see, we ask the European citizens, how much money do you pay for space? And uh, the European citizens, after our survey, said about 250, approximately 250 euro per year and citizen. In fact, it's only 10 which ESA gets. And if we look to the human space flight, it's less than one euro per citizen, European citizen and per year. So it's not expensive at all. But at the same time, we know that space activities have a very good return of investment. I'm not talking now about inspiration, fascination, about uh, getting awareness about our tiny planet, but also about monies, money. And about one euro invested in space gets about six euros back in uh, economic development. So space is not expensive, and space has a very good return of investment. Could the rise of populism or even Brexit undermine the future of the European Space Agency? What we see also in ESA is that, uh, of course, the national interests are there. Um, the countries in ESA, they try to combine their national interests with ESA interests. That's also the task of the Director General. Brexit uh, for us is not such a big problem because uh, UK decided very early to remain in ESA and I think we can really show 
that Europe is working, that Europe is living, because working together uh, beyond these national activities of all the different member states, this is the beauty of ESA. So ESA is, in that sense, it's a unique uh, entity, and it's working. American and Chinese programs work a lot with private companies. How does the European Space Agency work? So the European space activities are were from the very first day also private activities. It's a little bit forgotten in this discussion, but you see, for instance, Ion Space, the company which is a provider for the launchers, is a private organization. And all the spacecrafts uh, Europe has are built by private industry. But of course, we are also looking to changing the methods of how to procure space activities. Uh, we have, for instance, now uh, public-private partnerships, very successful already, especially in the field of uh, um, telecommunication satellites. But now we have also public-private partnership in the area of launchers, in the area of Earth observation. And very recently, we also introduced it uh, in a very special way for space safety, meaning uh, space debris removal through a service offer. So we are asking industry to deliver, and we will pay for it. And so it's uh, a different type. So Europe, Europe is not at all lacking behind in this respect. When you talk about going beyond the moon, we immediately think about Mars. Is it possible today to send a man to Mars? It will be possible to, then, to send humans to Mars, but don't ask me when it will be. Normally I say when I'm asked when will be the first uh, European on the surface of the moon, I say it will be a Monday, but I don't know which one. And then we can, Tuesday we can go to Mars. Uh, so humans will go to Mars. Uh, humans uh, are climbing up Mount Everest. Uh, humans are on the, in the Antarctica, in the deep sea. So it is in our, in our DNA to go beyond. And therefore, humans will travel to Mars and uh, back. So I'm very much in favor also not, not to have a one, uh, one trip only, one way trip, but to go back and to go forth and back, because this is uh, very important. So I'm not uh, favoring colonization of Mars or Moon for uh, infinite time, because uh, the Earth is much the most beautiful, much more beautiful than all the other ones. But yes, humans will go to Mars, uh, but it will take time because it's much more difficult than to go to Moon. To go to the Moon, you can do it in one week uh, to go there and back. To Mars, it takes two years with today's technology, and uh, we should be very sure that we can get the people back. So therefore, it's a different story. Do you agree with the idea that it is uh, necessary to settle on the Moon first before going to Mars? The Moon is an ideal test bed for developing technologies, for instance, also how to use resources. When we go to, to Mars, we should use the Mars material also as a shelter for the astronauts while they are staying on the surface of Mars. And therefore, to, to develop all these technologies is a good thing to do it on the Moon. Also to use, for instance, water. We have on, uh, on the Moon, we found now also water and how to use water either for the astronauts to drink or as a propulsion for a return rocket, uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, uh, the Moon is just a perfect test bed uh, also to, for travels towards Mars. Well, I know that the European Space Agency is working on a Moon Village project. I know it was your idea. What is the purpose of this village? The Moon Village is, in complicated word, uh, a multi-partner open concept. So the Moon Village is not one project where we build some houses, a church, and maybe a bar or whatever. The Moon Village is the idea of working together, like a village on Earth where people are coming together to work together with different interests, different capacities. And this is exactly what is happening right now, and I'm very glad to see this. So the Moon is right now already the Moon Village because all the different actors worldwide, public and private, uh, robotic and uh, uh, with uh, astronauts, they are working together. And this is exactly the idea of this open concept, um, which I defined as uh, Moon Village. So I'm, the Moon Village is more or less a fact right now, and therefore I'm very happy. If the Americans go together with the Europeans to the surface of the Moon, then this is part of the Moon Village, because two are going there with different interests, different uh, competencies, and we're doing it. And uh, also the Japanese, the Russians, so it is already. So there is not a, a certain day. Now, this Monday, we start with the first building of the Moon Village. The Moon Village is the concept, is the idea. And the idea is now reality. 
And how do you explain that we went from a race to space between two superpowers in the 1960s to an international cooperation today? Yeah, you see, the 60s, um, there were some uh, interactions, but not so well known, but there were some interactions already uh, also at that time. Uh, but you're right, it was a race in space. Uh, it was about prestige and all of this uh, very strongly. But also in the 1969, the landing on the surface of the moon, there was a European experiment with NASA, which was even there before the flag of the Americans. It was an experiment of the uh, of Swiss uh, University Bern, so uh, to measure solar flares. So there was already some cooperation, and in 1975, that was the first step where we saw that uh, the Americans and the Russians had the Soyuz a Apollo rendezvous and docking. That was a very important step forward. Today, we are in a totally different setup. We are working together in space beyond all the earthly crisis, even if there are sanctions and all of this. And therefore, the beauty of uh, space today is that we are really beyond the earthly crisis. And it's very important for humankind that we are working together. Thank you very much, uh, Jan Warner. Thank you for watching Front 24. I'm here in Kanitra, Morocco with our observer Ayoub. He contacted us with a problem. مدينة القنيطرة تعرف مشاكل بيئية كثيرة من بينها هجمة الأبقار والأغنام والكلاب الضالة على مدينة القنيطرة بسبب عدم التزام بالقانون والتسيب ومشاكل أخرى كثيرة. It's the next Observers Direct. The Observers Direct, presented by Derek Thompson on France 24 and France24.com.